Okay, respond, respond, respond. Okay, so today is the last lecture, um, which is just a bit more to cover on BLAST. Now, during your sequence analysis, you already covered a lot of BLAST already. So the, the only thing is, how are you going to use BioPython to, to do two things? One is, how do you run the BLAST using BioPython itself? And then how do you actually process the BLAST output? Okay. So for example, you know that in your BLAST, uh, now I've got to rerun the BLAST again. When you run your BLAST, it will actually produce an output. You can actually save the output. Okay, later we will we'll do that. You can actually save the output into a file. Then you can use BioPython to actually process the file. Okay. So it can be quite convenient. So what on earth is BLAST? I'm sure you have, um, Dr. Chan have covered this quite well. So it's an uh, abbreviation for Basic Local Alignment Search Tool. Essentially, it is a search engine for two purposes. One is to search the sequence that you put in, basically your query against what is known outside. That means against GymBank or protein databases to find out what is the identity of your sequence. The second one is to find regions of similarity. Now, regions of similarity, you can actually use this thing known as a pairwise BLAST. So you see here, let's say when you run BLAST P, you can have a sequence, you put in a sequence and you will scan for the um, non-redundant protein database. You can actually find, have a few different databases. Or you can actually align two or more sequences. That means if I click this, it will change. So I can put in the um, one sequence here, one sequence here. So I can have do a pairwise alignment. I want to check for similarity between two sequences. I can do that as well. Okay. There are other methods to do it. You can don't use BLAST. In fact, BioPython do have a few other options. Um, let's see. BioPython do have... Uh, okay, kind of go off. Let's go up. Okay. BioPython do have a few other options of um, single alignment. Okay. So you can actually run BLAST itself, or you can even um, do... Uh, a search. Okay, just by checking two sequences, you can use um, algorithms like Smith Waterman algorithm or Michael Mann Walsh algorithm. So these are for pairwise blast, okay, pairwise alignments. So you can do use it pretty well. So what we are actually doing here is we are actually looking at this chapter seven in your Python tutorial and cookbook. You can run blast over the internet, or you can download the entire BLAST program if you want. Okay, sometimes it's quite useful to download the entire BLAST program to run BLAST yourself. Okay. You can run it locally. It's actually not difficult to do. Okay. You should learn how to do that. Mm. You can even actually get BioPython to process your multiple sequence alignment, which you have already learned in your um, sequence analysis. Okay. Because I've, well, I, I read through what you're supposed to do for your sequence analysis poster anyway. Okay. So essentially, how do you run BLAST? There's actually a few different things. Number one is you have to find which BLAST program to run. Hopefully by now you should know the different BLAST program, BLAST M, P, X, T BLAST, and T BLAST X. What is the database you want to search against? Is it a uh, non-redundant database, is it a RefSeq database, or so on and so forth. <clears throat> okay, then your sequence itself. The sequence itself, it can be a sequence identifier, or a sequence in FESTA file, or just a sequence. Basically, anything that you can put in here, it will run. Because at the end of the day, it's actually running using this program. Just as sometimes it can be a bit cranky. Okay. So you remember this this URL. Blast itself, you can go and look for Blast program. It also uses the same URL to run. Okay, so there's actually no difference. All right, the base data, the base URL is the same. Okay, but it's in this module called NCBI WWW. 
So just a quick recap, your blast N is you put in the input. The input here is the query. The query sequence is a nucleotide sequence. You search against nucleotide database. Blast P is protein against protein. Blast X is you give it a, pro, a nucleotide sequence. It do a six frame translation to search against the protein database. So it's as good as you take the nucleotide, do your own six frame translation, and then you run blast six times of blast P. Okay. Blast N, you cannot simulate it. You give it a protein database. What NCBI does is it uses all the nucleotide database, convert it into protein databases, and run it. Okay. So usually for NCBI, the nucleotide and protein database is quite synchronized. Okay. There are a little bit of uh, minor differences, but it's still okay. P blast X is you take the nucleotide, you you translate it into a six frame translation and you run the nucleotide, com nucleotide um, translated database. So in this case, T blast X, you're running 36 um, blast searches. So it can take some time. All right, so it can be quite useful depending on what you want. And I'm sure Dr. Chan also did mention why it's more commonly you use a protein to search rather than nucleotide to search. Okay, hopefully you still remember what are the reasons. Um, anyone remember what's the reason why we tend to use protein rather than nucleotide as an input sequence? Anyone? Why for most cases we use protein to query rather than nucleotide to query? More informative. Um, okay, Ryan, what, why don't you just, just explain a little bit about what does it mean by more informative? Okay, multi correct. So multiple codons can code for the same amino acid because your genetic code is degenerate, which means that the different nucleotide sequence can actually give you the same protein sequence. So if you use nucleotide sequence to blast, you may actually have a lot of noise. Okay, so protein using protein sequence to blast is actually cleaner. Now you realize that we use the term protein here to be synonymous with peptide sequence. Okay. If you remember your biochemistry, nobody actually used protein sequence because it's, there's no such thing as protein sequence. There's only peptide sequence. Remember your tertiary to quaternary protein structure? A protein can be made up of multiple peptides. Okay. So technically, when you come to sequence analysis, come to bioinformatics, when most of the time when we talk about protein sequence, we are really talking about peptide sequence or more strictly speaking, amino acid sequence. Okay, so don't get confused with this. When you talk to a, a pure biologist which doesn't do bioinformatics, a protein, you're talking about a quaternary structure protein. Okay, when you talk to a bioinformaticist about protein, you're talking about a tertiary structure protein, which is technically your peptide. Okay, so please don't get confused. Huh? <clears throat> I've seen a lot of people getting a bit confused there. <clears throat> All right, so how do you run BLAST? Now, of course, you can go to NCBI and you can do the whole thing. So let's repeat this whole process. The next few slides tells you um, what you have to do. So I've, I'm not going to go through detail in itself but I'm just going to show you how to actually do it again. Okay. So let's say in our tutorial eight, okay, we have a sequence, uh, rather the lecture eight, we have a sequence. So I copy this sequence and I don't want to do a blast. I want to do a blast P with the non-redundant um, nucleotide sequence, nu nucleotide databases. So I go to blast, okay? So I put in my sequence already. 
here you can actually put in more than one FASTA sequence. Okay. So if you have multiple sequence, all you need to do is to convert this into a FASTA. Just put your carrot and then just say this is sequence one and so on. Okay. If you have multiple sequences in a FASTA, you can upload a file. Okay. Um, let me just get away with this. All right. Okay. Then the redundant protein sequence is quite useful. The organism is can be useful. If you do this, I can actually search for only specific organism or even specific genus, specific orders and so on. So let's say I want to find this uh, peptide in a uh, order of organism called diprotodontia. So diprotodontia is uh, order, okay. Um, it is all the Australian marsupials, those that have two teeth. Okay, that's why it's called uh, two dontia, the proto dontia. Okay, you can exclude or you can just search for this. Okay? If you do not want, then just leave it as it is. There are different blast programs that you can use. Okay, so normally we take blast P. You can have other programs, so you can actually go and read. Okay. So let's read through a little bit more. What are some of the programs? Uh, this is not telling me anything. Yeah, it just tells you that which one converts for which one. So this useful. Then after that, what you want is you can go to algorithm parameters. This tells you what is the number of results you want to return back. What is the word size? Um, your matrix, hopefully you still remember the differences between your Boston matrix and PAM matrix. Okay. Otherwise, um, Dr. Chan will be quite sad about it. Okay. Then what you do, sometimes for my case is, I will just show the results in the new window. Okay. So if nothing else I want to change, I just click plus. Okay. So it will show. Okay. And as you realize that it can take a little bit of time. <clears throat> So if you this request ID is that it will give you a uh, ID if you have not put in any title here. Otherwise, it will just give you a title. Okay. So this is your blast result, and you can look at the alignments. Okay, the alignment itself. See how the alignments look like. Okay, so I'll not go through that. So how do you save this blast result? What you can do is you can download download all and then you save it un as a XML file. Okay. So you save it as an XML file. So remember this G14 something. So it's actually the uh, request ID. So let's go to your download. Refresh. So now G14 something, G81 something. Okay. So let's stick this. Okay. So this is um, results. I did something here, so I throw it away first. Just call this my last result. Save it. Now, what on earth does this file looks like? It is actually a XML file. I'll show you later, but let's continue with the slides first. You can blast over the internet using BioPython. Essentially, how do you do that? You use this function called blast, QBlast in um, this module. So what you have to do is this. You import from bio.blast, import ncvi www, and you also import the ncvi XML as well. So this is exactly what I have. This is the result handler. So I use blast QBlast. I what database? What is the blast program? What database I want? The sequence. So this is the sequence I put it in. I want to return only ten descriptions and ten alignments. Okay. This can take a long time to run. It depends. Okay, it depends on your luck. So if your internet is a bit flaky, it can take forever. For you to run because it, it is actually 
there's an internet disruption, it doesn't give you any error, it will just hang there. So that is a problem. Okay. Some people will actually do a, a, a sleep time. So let's say if it takes like five minutes and it's too long to run, then you just refresh the whole thing. Okay. So let's take this example. And hopefully it runs. Okay, sometimes it doesn't run. So let me just open another uh, console so that it doesn't get stuck somewhere. So let me run this on console one. So hopefully it runs. Okay. I have no idea. Some, just now when I try, it doesn't run. Okay. So what can you put inside this Q blast? You go to the Q blast page. Okay, basically, this is what you want, want to read. What can you put inside Q blast? There's actually a lot of things you can put inside. Heaps of things. Okay. You can put in the format. You can put in the E value, the threshold E value. You can put in some filter, you can put in your gap cost, the type of genetic code, hit list, it's everything that you can put in because it caters for all the different BLAST programs. So the useful parameters will be the program, the database, the sequence, the alignments and all this stuff. You can define your own matrix as well. So it's up for you, up to you to play. And basically everything in today's lecture is really you can go to your BioPython cookbook and look at chapter seven blast. Okay. Basically, I'm using the same function as here. There's no difference. Okay, but there are some um, checks that you have to be careful. Okay, so let's see if it runs. If it doesn't run, then we have our results in the first place. Okay. So the return results is um, the return result is actually inside a file. So what you can do is once you process the file, you can actually save the file because let's say once you return, assuming that this runs well, right? The QBlast runs well you can actually write it out into a file because you can use a file writer and write it out. So basically, I'm showing you what I will do if everything runs well. I will actually open a, a results file, an XML results file with a write option. Then I will write the file handler in. So I, the write output is file handler dot read. So I read from this file handle and write it out. Then I close both of them. So this is a, a standard step. Okay. Now, assuming that I already have the results. So let's say I write out into this. That's now my blast result. Okay. So I have my blast result inside the download. So how do I, what is blast result going to look like? I open it and see what happens. Okay. So blast result is actually this XML file. Okay. It's actually an XML file. Gives you all the information. Okay. You have your HSPs and so on. So it's a long list of data. A few thousand lines. Basically what it does is it gives you all the results that you see in the description as well as alignment. Okay. This um, graphical summary, we don't really have bother. Okay. All right, so you can actually download all this. So why not we try to read this file and see what happens? So let's say we collect our blast results. The main thing is we do not want to run blast on the web too many times okay because it is really a bit cranky okay, so you see it's, it's still not running okay. but assuming that it's running and you can collect the results already what can you do the next step is to um process the blast output file okay so first you want to open the xml file actually you are reading a file we have done this a few times reading a file is not a problem the 
file is actually open as this result handle. Then what you can use is this uh, NCBI XML to actually process the file handler. Okay. After which you can look through each individual blast record to do something or we can convert it into a list. So this is exactly what I did. <clears throat> okay. So step two is assuming that, okay, so I'm here. Assuming that I have already have um, the output, okay. So I will import XML, uh, NCBI XML, and my file output, I read as blast output. So I open to read as output. So let me just run these two lines. Since this is uh, not functioning very well. So once I run these two lines, so now I have a blast output. Okay, because blast output is essentially just a file handle. What I will then do is, <clears throat> I will use XML, NCBI XML pass. Okay, here in the notes it says that if I have just one result, that means I only do one blast. I can actually just use read. If I have multiple results, let's say instead of putting um, one sequence to blast, I have a whole file to blast. I will need to use pass instead, P-A-R-S-E. So why not? Even if it's just one record, I just use pass anyway. It makes my life a lot easier. I don't have to remember two things. So I pass the output. And then I convert the blast record into a list. Otherwise, it's not going to convert into a list. So if I convert blast record into a list and there's only one, I blast only one sequence. I will only have only one record. Okay. So let's run, try this. I will just check okay, my length of my blast records. It means how many things have, how many sequences have I blast? Just one. That's what I expect. Okay. So you can actually just see what is that blast record, which is actually just a, just a list. Okay, the list of the blast record. Okay. So since it's only one, I make my life simpler. I just use record to get the first record. Okay, so I'm just pulling out. I just do not want the um, the list anymore. Okay, so here, if I have record, it's just plus record. And you can see that the memory address is the same. So you're talking about the same blast record. So what do I want to go inside to find out? So once I have the blast record, this is how the blast record looks like. In blast, there is description, alignment, multiple alignments. Okay, In the description, I have title, score, e-value, and number of alignments. In the alignments itself, I have title, length, and HSPS. Okay. Within this, I have my alignments itself. So let's go through and see whether can we see all this information. Okay. So it tells me that I should have descriptions, alignments. Okay, I should have multiple description alignments. Okay. So I can have record descriptions. So there's actually a lot of descriptions. It's a list of descriptions. Basically, depending on how many um, output do I have, this is description. One, everyone is one description. So I have as many descriptions I have here. Essentially, it, it tells me that um, there's 100 of them or even more okay because in ncb in uh yeah in ncbi the default is 100 okay in the ncbi q blast the default is 500 uh. so this is important the default is 500 500 and description is 500 
So let us go into just one of them. The first one, okay? And then we see whether inside we have title, score, e value, and so on. So let's go to title. Title. A A A A K five four six something. So let's go this. Go here. Okay. This is first one. Okay. I'm supposed to have an e value of one times ten to a power of minus one three two. Do I get that? One times yeah. How about that. Okay. Um, then what else was another piece of information can I find? The number of alignments and so on. Okay, I can even have the score. So what does the score tells me? Score. Seven, <clears throat> nine, seven, one. So the score actually corresponds to, uh, it's actually not listed here. Okay, the score is, you have to go to alignments. The score, yeah, this, this is the score. It's actually in alignments. Okay. Then within each one, there are different alignments as well. Okay. So you can actually go and dig out all the information. But what we want is just give me the first output. Okay. So essentially, if I have a threshold, E value threshold, this can be any E value threshold, can be 0 0.01, 0 0.05, or what? So I go to my record plus record. In this case, will be just record. Okay. Alignments. I pull out the alignments. If the HSP is in the alignments and the HSP expected expect result is less than the threshold, I will print out the data. So I can print out the alignment title, alignment length, e value, and then the query subject and the match. Essentially, what I'm trying to do is to replicate this. But I'm just replicating the first line. Okay, because here is up to 60. So what I'm doing here is from 0 to 75. So it's actually 75 sequences. Then everything is all a lot. Because otherwise it's very hard to read. So let me just run this and you'll get a something that looks like this, the like alignment and so on. Okay. So let me go back. Okay, so what I have here is I I use a threshold of less than one times ten to the power of minus nine. Okay, do I do alignment? The title, the length, and then the query, match, and subject. Okay, query is the one that you put in. So let's run this, and we will see what happens. See what they do. And I just run it. So you give me all the output. So I can go up. Okay, in fact, you will print out all the outputs. So I have my sequence, my length, my E value. Then this is the query. This is the subject. This is the alignment. Okay. Hopefully, Dr. Chan also teach you how to read the alignments already. What is a, what does a space mean? What does a plus mean? And so on. So you can actually do that for multiple pieces of work. So far, so good. Okay. Essentially, your tutorial is also very simple. I've already more or less given you all the answers for tutorial. Because why? Actually, everything in BioPython is made itself simple to use. Um, here, I actually show you how is it done, okay, how to actually process the output. Basically, I'm running identical method. See, this is basically what I copied just now. Okay. All right. Okay. You can actually run other programs. You can actually download Blast program yourself. If you need to run a lot of Blast, then maybe there's a better way. You can build your own Blast database as well. It's not difficult, it's just one command. Okay, so far so good. Any problem? Okay. 
Yes, no? If no, this is going to be a shortest lesson. Hopefully, you have start working on your project already. <clears throat> all right. So anyway, I have put in, put up all the lecture videos on YouTube. You can go and view it as well, just in case, um, as you have, might have realized that the group, you know, is actually you have to scroll all over the place. Okay, so I'll just ask you one more time. Anyone have violent objections with for me putting the videos on YouTube? Say now or maintain your silence forever. Make it into a playlist. Rebecca, Rebecca, Rebecca. That's a little bit too much to ask, okay? But I did make it into a playlist somehow already. It's just not that obvious. What? Okay, now, you know my where's my website, right? You just go to my website, go and hunt down Morris Link. Just go and Google Morris Link, you'll find me anyway. Okay, so not this. You have to. Uh, huh, huh. Anyway, um, go to my GitHub website. So, go to this morrislink.github.io. That is my website here. Oops, uh, not here. So it's a wiki. Or you can just go and type Morris Link. github.io okay you will go to my website then go and scroll to this side panel called videos on youtube i am bros you're fine it is the lecture 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 not the tutorial you want tutorial or not Okay, go to videos on YouTube. Then you scroll down to this scripting in uh, bioinformatics. Ah, yeah, that's it. Okay. So no violent objections, huh? Okay, so that's all for today. Bye bye. Good luck for all your interviews as well. No idea what's going to happen. What happened already? And uh, yeah, to, to Thursday, Thursday, hold on, hold on, Thursday, there is a the last tutorial on four to six. Although it's going to be a very short tutorial. Friday is polling day, so nobody's around. Um, even Thursday, yeah, four to six. Okay. Don't try to look for a lot of other lecturers because most of your lecturers will be down for election duties. So almost nobody is around. All right. Okay. So the tutorial is actually very simple. If you go to your tutorial, there's only only one question. Okay. I'm asking you to. I give you a sequence. Ask you to find right blast, which is really is in Q blast, right? Then print alignment. I've shown you that already. So that, yeah, just me election duties. Election duties, you know, when you go to, you see election, election, the polling booth, right? Who do you think those people are those checking your name list and so on? Yeah, it's basically every ministry is being called up. No, not just MOE, every ministry is being called up. Right. A very simple tutorial. Okay. Have fun. Bye bye.